Here we are at multi-level modeling now, and we'll start with cluster randomized trial. Now, multi-level models are used when data is clustered within a, a hierarchy, so levels, structure that makes them non-independent. Uh, these are also known as linear mixed models. When we say that they're hierarchical or non-independent, let's take a look at our cluster here. So clusters are where it's a design where an entire cluster is randomly assigned to a control arm or, or treatment arms. So those clusters themselves are uh, the hierarchical structure. A cluster might be like a school or a hospital or maybe a block in a neighborhood, something like that. So within that cluster, they're all related through something like the fact that all the kids go to the same school. Um, so they're not truly independent. That's what we mean uh, by hierarchical. So there's a lot going on here with our web power here. Web power here with uh, web power CRT control randomized trials to arm. So uh, there's sample size the number of individuals per cluster. So now we're going to deal with clusters, uh, So which is J, the number of clusters or sides. So how many clusters are considered? And to set it on, and then you need at least two clusters. It's a big thing. Again, uh, some normal stuff here. We have alpha and power, and then of course effect size. And we can do it for different, uh, either the main effect, mean difference, and so forth. And then there's this ICC, it's inner class correlation. It's the degree which any two randomly drawn observations within a cluster are correlated. So it kind of is a measure of like, well, how non-independent are these clusters? And then we need a uh, alternative because we can do one, two, one or two sided. So thing to note here, I'm just showing you this CRT2. You can actually, so that's just like where there's a treatment and a control but there are three arm designs where like you have treatment one, treatment two, and a control, something like that. You can use, they do have the option of uh, web power control on those trial three arm, but I'm just going to show two here for simplicity. So effect size, we still need to get here. We need to calculate ourselves. That's going to be the mean difference between treatments and control clusters uh, divided by uh, the square root of this uh, sum, which is the between cluster variance and then the within cluster variance. So let's take a little example. We're not going to need to calculate ourselves yet. So is there a difference in blood glucose levels between a treatment and a control? So the null is there is no difference. Alternative there is. Let's get some medium effect size here. So again, that's 0.25. This is an F test. So we don't know the ICC, so let's guess it at 0.1. Now, 0.5 would be the default for repeat measures, but we expect this to be low because these observations are from different people. They're going to be related, but probably not that strongly related. And we don't really care about a difference or care about uh, greater or less, just a difference, so we'll use two-sided. Now, within cluster rounds trials, you could test for two different things. You could either say, we want the, how many clusters we should get, or, or sorry, how many numbers per cluster or the cluster number. So let's try for 100 clusters, see what that gives us. And let's also try for 15 individuals per cluster to get how many clusters we should have. Okay, here. So for the first one, if we're just looking at number per cluster, we're going to fill in our effect size, our ICC, alpha power, and alternative. But then we're going to have our J, our number of clusters to be 100, which gives us an N. Uh, so we'll round up to 10 individuals per cluster. So we have 100 clusters, 10 individuals per cluster. So number of subjects per cluster. However, if we put our N in our cells with everything else being equal, that will give us a J, a, a cluster number of ended up being 84 clusters, so 42 per arm. So 42 are going to be you know, treated, and 42 are going to be control. So that's how you do that there. Now, the second main 
multi-level modeling is multi-site randomized trials. So again, these are hierarchical, but th in this case, uh, they're a type where the entire cluster is, again, it's assigned to a control or treatment model, but then it can be analyzed in a two-level hierarchical linear model. Uh, so it's a little more complicated. Um, the simplest case would be just clusterized randomized trials, but here we can look at more complex things like uh, one type types is the main effect, the, the main treatment effect, the site effect, and then the variance test, the variance of the different treatment effects. So again, we can answer the same, ask the same core question, but we could get more nuanced answers. Uh, is there a difference in blood glucose? So again, here we're, we have a bunch going on. Let's talk through. We already seen effect size. It's a little bit different when we need to calculate it because uh, for our purposes, it's just going to be the mean difference between treatment and control clusters divided by the sample specific variance. Uh, we still have number of clusters, our alpha power alternative, but now here we have these different types. So the different tests, the main side or variance. Main is default. Uh, so we're going to just use the main effect because we're interested in actually the blood glucose levels. We're not really interested in like if the different clusters or different sides have have different um, variances and so forth. Then uh, there's these three variables that we need. There's the tau, uh, tau 00. So it's a variance of cluster site means. Uh, it's residual variance in a second level of this uh, hierarchical, a uh, two level hierarchical hierarchical linear model. Tau 1, 1 is a variance of treatment effects across sites, and it's another uh, residual variance in the second level. And then SG2 is the level 1 error, error variance, so variance in the first level. So uh, if we're just using a main effect, we don't need this uh, tau 0, 0, and then we don't need these ones for if we're looking for different uh, uh, variance effects. And then again here we could use three arms if we really want to but we're just doing two here for right now. So in our example again uh, medium effect here since we're doing main effect we're going to guess a tau 1 1 of 0.5 and then a SG2 of the level 1 error variance of 0.1 and then we'll do two-sided. Once again, we can test for either cluster or number per cluster. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So we can plug all these things in here and then try 100 clusters, which gives us 15 individuals per cluster. Conversely, if we put in our number first, it pops up a 100 clusters, which, which makes sense. We we plug in 100, we get 15. If we plug in 15, we get 100. So there we go. OK, so this is a big caveat I found with this multi-level modeling. While the Web Power documentation does say you can use it for kind of small clusters of like two or more, I really found that it can't be used for small cluster number unless the effect size is really large and the inner correlation coefficient is low. So just keep that in mind. If you put in certain values that you think are reasonable, um, it might not like it and actually like spit out that it can't calculate anything. So keep that in mind. So there's limitations to this. All right, let's take some time to practice here. Um, there's a lot going on so make sure um, you kind of get your head around a little bit of what's what you need for these here. Try this on your own and we'll see you on the next page. All right, for one, let's piece this out. So we see that we're uh, separatized by cluster. We see that we're asking if we could lower blood pressure, so we, we're going to do a one-tailed test. 
And we see that we have 50 hospitals, so those are our cluster number. And we see that uh, Traja blood pressure is lowered by 6.9 with a B between cluster variance and with within cluster variance of 2.13. So it's great. So we can just use that to get effect size. So this is the mean difference. It was lowered, so 6.9. And then these two uh, between and within cluster variance here to get effect size of 0.4. And then our inner class correlation. I don't think I showed that on another page, but this is um, going to be the between cluster correlation divided by the sum of the between class and within cluster. And not between class, between cluster and within cl cluster variation. So we take that here to have a correlation of 0.19. So that's how much the, cor the individuals within a cluster are correlated. We throw this in here, 50, ICC of 19, and what we find here is 17 samples per cluster. There we go. For two, uh, interested in determining if blood pressure changes uh, using six hospitals, state round runs at each effect. So it looks like we have six clusters or sites, sites or clusters, whatever we want to call that. Um, and we found blood pressure to be different by 2.5, a variance of treatment effect across size of two and a person specific variance of one. This is looking more like what we want to try is the uh, multi-site randomized trials. We see that there's, uh, if drug three changes blood pressure, so I would go with a, uh, a two-tailed test uh, here with uh, two-sided. Two then our effect size is going to be that that uh, blood pressure difference, so 2.5 divided by the variance. Um, of person specific variance, so that's just going to be one actually, so it's going to be 2.5. And then our tau 1 1 is our variance across, of treatment across effect across sites. So that's two, that's a second level variance. And then SG2 is going to be the person specific variance of one. So that's just level one error variance. Plug that all in and we actually get four samples per site. Last, let's just chat a little bit about a generalized linear mix model. So it's, it's the combination of a generalized linear model and a mixed model. And so it's incredibly powerful and versatile because a generalized linear model can use non-normal data like um, like we've seen before, like logistic regression or Poisson regression. It can also do things like negative binomial, uh, beta, exponential, log normal, whatever distribution you want. While a mixed model can use both fixed and random effects. So this can Pretty much use any combination of non-normal data, fixed random effects, categories, numerical, whatever you want. It's very sophisticated, can use a very wide range of models. So it's kind of like the gold standard or the, the Swiss Army knife, maybe if you want it, of sophisticated modeling today. Uh, so it takes a lot of work though to use these models because you really have to understand how to create the model and define different variables. Um, so I've decided to create a module of its own uh, just to cover all the variation you can do with it. It's not simply like some of these tests where like say like the t-test or ANOVA or even like religious regression where it's fairly straightforward of what you can build or not. You can build so many different things with a generalized linear mixed model. So uh, look for um, another sample size module in R. Uh, we're, I'm going to tentatively call it sample size calculation with our GLMMs. This was made possible by, by Dakota, um, the Dakota C Cancer Collaborative on Translational Activity, of which the Biostatistics Corps, the BIRD Corps, is a part of. We're supported by the NIH under award number here. So if you found this helpful for your research, please acknowledge us in publications. 
Here are some references for you. Uh, for general references, this is a great link just on a quick R power guide overview. Uh, this is a article about that non-parametric sample size correction. For specific packages, here's the that uh, power package. Here's web power, and to go along with web power, really great uh, manual of using web power. Um, I definitely that would be that was my go-to when I was going through things like uh, the multi-level modeling, repeated measures of Nova, and so forth. So with that, thank you and have a good day.